Hey guys, Smitty here with Just Peeling Barbecue. Thank you for stopping by. On today's video, I'm going to be discussing temperature control for the Kamado Joe. So stay tuned. Alright, today's going to be a simple video. Uh, it's not a cooking video, more of an instructional type video on how I um, maintain a, a solid temperature on the Kamado Joe. I see a lot of people, oh glory is getting in the way. I see a lot of people uh, have a lot of issues with their Kamado Joes as far as overshooting their temperatures and not being able to control their temps where they want it to be. And I've also had a couple of subscribers that have recently gotten Kamado Joes who wanted me to do a video on how I maintain uh, a certain temperature on my Kamado Joe and also discuss a little bit about how much charcoal to put in the Kamado Joe. So we're gonna cover those things today now. I'm not telling you this is how you should do it. I'm just showing you how I do it and I've had success doing it this way. You may have another way and if your way is working, by all means, use the way that you're more comfortable with. So let's get started. Okay, really this uh, Kamado Joe, really most any type of uh, ceramic grill it's not going to be much different than, say, a, a Weber kettle or any kind of kettle grill as far as maintaining temps go, and that's because it really all depends on airflow, obviously how much fuel that you put in there, but the main thing is airflow. If you control airflow, you're going to control your temperatures, and so that's what we're going to talk about now. The two main ways that we're going to control the airflow on this Kamado Joe is by this daisy wheel up top, and by the bottom vent down there at the bottom. That's the two ways that we're gonna control it. Now right now, this one's all the way wide open, and this one, if I open it like that, then I've got a wide open hole at the top. So right now, this is what I call wide open. It's open as far as you can open it at the bottom, as far as you can open it at the top. This is usually how I start the Kamado Joe. All right, now I'm gonna take you through the process of how I go about starting my Kamado Joe. Now the charcoal that's in it now is charcoal that has been left over from a previous cook. I've already cleaned it out um, and I even vacuumed it out this time so you can see um, all the parts of the in internals of the ceramic. One thing you want to make sure of that is that all of these holes are clear of any debris because that's going to help get airflow to your charcoal and as well the holes in the bottom down there that's so the the, uh, the ash can fall down in there into your ashtray. Um, but that's also going to help with airflow as well, and you don't want it clogged up with ash. So make sure all that's clean. Uh, vacuum out in, as much ash as you can, and then you've got good charcoal left over. All right, now I'm going to put some more charcoal into the Kamado Joe using some B&B &B lump charcoal, thanks to Stephen Manis, one of my subscribers. Um, so I'm going to show you how much charcoal I usually put in my Kamado Joe. Now this is usually about as much charcoal as I put in uh, my Kamado Joe because it cooks really efficient. I usually dig me a hole down in the middle and that's where I put my fire starter. Once I light it, then I'll kind of stack some, maybe across it like that. I usually put a couple of chunks of smoke wood spread those around a little bit. And that's usually how I start up my uh, Kamado Joe. All right, a couple of things about the amount of charcoal that I've got in there. It really doesn't matter a whole lot uh, how much you have in there. It depends on what you're gonna be cooking. If it's a short cook, you really don't need a whole lot. But if it's a long cook, then you're gonna wanna make sure that you have enough fuel that's gonna cover the whole cook time, okay? More fuel is better than less fuel. And the reason is because if you set it just like I got it right here, um, it's going to burn from the inside out. And as long as you control your airflow correctly, it's going to be a nice slow burn for a, for a low and slow. Uh, and then when you get through with your cook, as you saw at the beginning of the video, you can shut down the bottom and shut down the top. It's going to snuff out that fire and you're going to have the remaining charcoal left over for use in the next cook. So it's really not that big a deal to overload it rather than uh, have a problem with running out of charcoal. You really don't want to do that. 
So this is how I usually set it up. And now we'll go through the process of dialing in that temperature setting. So strictly for uh, purposes of this video, I'm going to go ahead and start a fire and show you exactly how I tune in one of my cooks as far as temperature goes. So that's usually how I start it off. And we're going to let that get going. Now, while this uh, fire starter is going, I usually leave the lid open. And I usually leave the, leave the lid open, the bottom all the way open, until the fire starter is pretty much gone. Once that happens, then I'll close the lid and I'll show you the next step. All right, it's been approximately five minutes and the fire starter is completely blackened over and it's pretty much gone. I've, had, I've kept the same setup, wide open down there in the bottom and the lid is wide open at the top. Now that the fire starter is almost gone, I'm just gonna close the lid. Just for uh, instructional purposes, I'm gonna stop it at say, let's say 275. We'll just pick up the temperature today. We'll say 250. So we're going to stop it at 250 today. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to keep that all the way open. And I'm going to slide this all the way open. So again, we're at that wide open setting. We're wide open at the bottom. We're wide open at the top. One, one small note about the smoke wood that I put in there. That's hickory chunks. And you saw the way I put them in there. Another way that you can do that is a way that my buddy Eddie Hanks, uh, he does it. He's got a ceramic grill as well, and he puts the uh, smoke wood in first and then puts the charcoal on top. Most of the time I end up doing it like this because I always forget until the charcoal is already in there. But if I think about it, I do it that way too. You get a little bit more smoke from your smoke wood doing it that way. So I like that method. But you can do it either way. So now we're just going to let it go like this until I start seeing the temperature creep up on the temperature gauge. And that's the key. A lot of people have problems because they start it, they go somewhere else, they leave it alone for a little bit, and then when they come out, they have gone over their temperature that they wanted to set it at, one, two, three hundred degrees. And it's really hard because this thing holds heat so well, it's harder to bring it back down than it is to creep up on it. So I always use the term creep up on the temperature that you want to get to. So. Once I see that start to creep up a little bit, I'll show you the next step. Okay, just to give you a reference on time, I started the fire starter in the grill from a cold start 20 minutes ago. And this is where we are now. My target temperature is 250 degrees. We're at around 275 right now. So uh, for me, I like to catch it around 75 degrees to 100 degrees away from my target temperature again so I can sneak up on it instead of bypassing. So now that we're we're about 75 degrees away, I want to go ahead and close this. Go ahead and close that up until it's about probably at the two and a half mark. There's one white line, two white lines, about two and a half. And I'm going to go ahead and close this one at the bottom. To about a thumb's width about an inch and that's where i'm going to keep it i'm not going to touch that anymore all i'm going to do is fine tune it with the one up top now here's the other thing that you have to consider again you want to be thinking ahead when you're doing these cooks this is what i love about the divide and conquer system you have the option of using the deflector plates or cooking without the deflector plates right over the coals. This is what I suggest. Again, this is all about airflow. If you're going to cook with the deflector plates in, I would suggest opening up the Kamado, going ahead and putting the divide and conquer system in with uh, your deflector plates in place, just how you're gonna set it up, and then close your lid and start adjusting with it set up just like you're going to cook with it. 
the reason is because those deflector plates, when you put those in, those are going to affect your airflow. And when I'm fine tuning, I want to adjust and fine tune with the setup exactly how it's going to be when I'm going to cook on it. Okay? If I don't put it in, if I'm using the deflector plates and I fine tune it to exactly 250, then I set the deflector plates in, it could cause my temperature to drop a little bit. It could cause my temperature to increase a little bit. It just depends on how it's going to affect the airflow. But I do know just having that big plate in there is going to have to affect my airflow. So I want to use it uh, and start adjusting with the setup that I'm going to be using if I'm using the deflector plate. Now if I'm not using my deflector plates, it really doesn't matter. Uh, the airflow is going to continue just like it is right now. Okay, so just something else to think about. I've dialed it down to two and a half. That's about a one inch or a thumb width. And now I'm sneaking up. Okay, now I'm at 225 already. That's why you want to stay ahead of it because now it's starting to increase pretty fast. So now I'm going to bump this down to about three quarter because it's moving pretty fast and I want to kind of get ahead of it. You've got to stay ahead of it. Okay. Now it's at about 240. Okay. So now we're going to see where it settles down and I'll bring you back as soon as I make the next adjustment. Alright, it's literally been maybe a minute and a half, two minutes since we stopped the camera last and now we are pegged out right at 250, dead on 250. I haven't just touched a thing, top or bottom, um, and I may not need to touch it anymore. It may have settled in right there. I'm going to keep an eye on it. It may go past it, um, maybe 10 degrees or so, and I can, I can adjust it very finely with this right here, go back down 10 degrees, and that's really where it's going to stay. It'll stay there six, seven, eight, ten hours. Um, every now and then, you may have to tap it back just a little bit. Uh, you know, something like that. Fine-tune adjustments. But that's really all there is to it. I mean, there was nothing hard about this at all. Wide open until you start uh, seeing some movement, and then you can start tapping it down and just sneak up on that temp. And that's really all there is to it. Um, one more thing to consider, you want to keep it clean. So after every three, four, five cooks, depending on how long the cooks are, um, you've got an ashtray down there that you can pull out and dump the ashes. But you want to use this ash tool, stir up the charcoal, get all that loose ash to fall to the bottom. And then it's not a bad idea, after you dump it a couple of times to get your shot back, run the hose in there, and get all that ash out because that's going to affect your airflow as well. Still steady dead at 250 baby if you want to sneak up on here and you can sneak up on it with the needle and see that it's dead on 250. And that's about where it's going to stay. Also once you start uh, cooking on your Kamado Joe or whatever ceramic grill that you have you're going to kind of know um, at that point, depending on if you use the same charcoal or not. I recommend finding the charcoal that you like and sticking with it. Um, I've used a couple and so far they've been really quality charcoal. They're burning about the same. But I know that about at this point and about a thumb width down at the bottom that I'm going to get 250 degree temperatures. And it's pretty much going to stay there plus or minus 5 or 10 degrees for six, seven, eight hours. Um, that's about as long as I've cooked on it so far. So um, I think that's about it. We're gonna go get a pound of bacon that we've got in there and throw on here just because we've already got it fired up. I don't want it to go to waste and cook some bacon without the deflector plates, which is why I didn't put the divide and conquer system in there. I hope this answers some questions for you. I hope this makes it a little bit easier for you to cook on your ceramic and dial in that temp best advice as I can give you is to stay ahead of the temp, don't let it go over, and sneak up on it. And uh, I think you'll get better results. Again, it's still pegged out maybe 253 or something. So that's the way it's going to be. So I hope you like this video. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me some comments. Let me know how you do it. Uh, if you do it differently, that's cool with me. Um, do it however you like. Until next time. I'll be piddling.
All right, today's 